Hello there, my name is Lais, and in this video we're going to have a look at lighting our scene inside of Nomad Sculpt. This is technically part two of the series on rendering inside of Nomad Sculpt, but it's meant to work as a standalone as well. So part one was on materials, let's focus on lights. Let's open up the shading tab and you can see we have three options. Unlit is pretty straightforward. That removes all the lighting from the scene and shows you the diffuse color of your model. Matte cap is a material with lights baked in. So they have different colors and light directions that can be applied to your model. It's not very accurate, but they are fast to render and can give you a special look. And finally, PBR, that's our main rendering engine. In PBR mode, the fastest way to light up your models is using environments. These are 360 degree HDRI images, so you can use all the color and light from the real location to light up your scene. You can adjust the exposure and rotate the environment to control the lights, and that scene also shows up in the reflections of your materials. The only downside is that the lights don't cast shadows. But it's a great and easy way to show your model in a variety of settings. And you can import your own environments as well. In the background tab, you have the option to show the environment or not. You can also blur or expose it separately from your model there. I always use an environment, if not for the lights, just to have something interesting in the reflections on the model. Now let's actually light the models ourselves. In the shading tab, there's a button to add lights, so let's just do that. You see a light has appeared in our scene, and we can move it around and rotate it. In our shading tab, let's hit the light where there's a little colored square to bring up the settings for this light. You can see that we can pick between three types of lights, directional, spot, and point. We're going to pick directional and focus on this first. So directional light is like the sun. It's a light that is so far away that the rays coming from it are parallel. You can see that if I move the light from left to right, the shadows don't move. Directional lights can be placed anywhere in your scene because of this. So if you want to control the light, you have to rotate it. Playing with the intensity and color, that's a great tool to combine with an environment HDRI to actually have shadows. This is the light to use to fake the light of the sun or the moon and works great with environments. You can always accent this with other lights like we're going to talk about now. Next, we're going to have a look at point lights. They're the opposite of directional lights. They emit light in every direction from a sphere, so their position in the scene is crucial. And you can't rotate them since it would be useless to rotate a sphere of light. Let's darken our scene to set the mood. You can see that moving this light from left to right has a dramatic impact. This is great for omnidirectional light sources like light bulbs or magic spirit balls. Finally, the last type of light we have access to is a spotlight. Like the name implies, it works like a spotlight. The positioning is important and you have more settings than the other lights. Let's put the light on his face straight on like the flash of a camera. Like the other lights, you can adjust the intensity, but also the cone angle. This lets you control the shape of the spot 
if it's small and focused like a flashlight or big and wide like a stadium light. The softness value lets you control the shape of the light. Turn it down to have a very sharp shape or bump it up to make it hard to tell the shape of the light. Let's use all that to make a dramatic lighting setup using a single spotlight. We're going to try and light up only his eyes. And since we're in a 3D app, we can actually do it as we would in real life and just add some barn doors to shape our light. Just adding two cubes in our scene and positioning them so they block the light is all we need. We'll just play with the cone shape to soften the edges of the shadow. And now we can play with the environment to set the amount of ambient light we want for the mood. We can even turn off the environment just to have the light on the eyes. In this last example, we're going to make a beauty shot lighting using three lights, like a studio lighting setup. We're going to make the first light be the main key light. This is our dominant light. We're going to place it to the side of the character slightly above him. Like a Rembrandt painting, we're trying to push the shadow of the nose to create a little triangle of light on the part of his face that's mostly in shadow. The next light is going to be our rim light. It's here to separate our character from the background. We're going to position it behind him and give it a green color to be a bit eerie and match our character. That's a light that can be very bright, but you need to adjust the position of the light to be almost the opposite of your camera. Finally, we're going to add a fill light to light up the side of his face that's in shadow. We're going to place the light below the character, increase the cone angle so that the shadows are as soft and as diffuse as possible. We're going to keep the brightness fairly low as well. This is faking light bouncing on the floor, so it should be subtle. You can turn off each light and see what every light does in isolation and see how they contribute to the lighting. And that's going to wrap things up for this video. In the next video, we're going to see what we can do using post-processing. And I hope to see you there.